everybody, it is Friday and it is now week three in our Dancing Dragonflies knit along. You don't want to hear that background noise. Um, so welcome everybody. Feel free to interact in the comments, say hello, let us know where you're watching us from, share your progress report on your mittens. I have seen some beautiful dragonfly mittens materializing on our events page. So if you go to um, the event tab at the top of our Facebook page, click on there, and then the first event that pops up is Dancing Dragonflies Knit Along. Click on there, and then you just click on Discussion. Discussion will give you all the tips and tutorials that I've been posting, as well as the um, fellow knit alongers posting their progress pics. So, um, welcome to the new knit alongers that have joined us this week. I'm going to show you the colors that they have chosen just for your inspiration. Uh, Sandra has signed up just today, so she probably has not passed them on. She was on her way to get her vaccine. She was quite excited. So she has chosen the dark gray and this lovely combo. So that is Malabrigo Indusita with the dark gray. And then we have Rita. Oh, Rita's chosen beauty. Also in the Malabrigo. So she's going to use this gorgeous deep, deep dewberry which is a tonal shade of purple. I can see three shades of purple in there. And for the dragonflies, they're going to be fluttering about in that beautiful light of love. So pinks, corals, and fuchsia. And then we have Karen who also has um, signed up this week, so it's never too late to um, sign up. If you see some colors that you might be interested in, just send me a message, post in the comments, or call me later, and I'm happy to uh, get it mailed out to you or for pickup. Uh, yes, so the last combo I think was this one, which is Azul. That is the beautiful shade of Periwinkle Teal into a denim blue hand dyed superwash merino and she's pairing that with the dark charcoal. We run out of the black now so we're pairing up pretty much the dark charcoal. I can show you that after. Um, so everybody who has signed up and purchased their yarn has a ballot automatically in the grand prize draw bucket. We'll be having the grand prize the Friday after week four, so that's two weeks today. It'll be a live draw, lots of fun. And over here, I have packaged up the, um, the grand prize. So there are some dragonfly items in there and some yarn, of course, there's a pattern, everything to get started on a nice spring project for the lucky winner after they finish their dragonfly mittens. And I'll show you progress on mine today. So just a quick recap, if you're joining us for the first time and you have no idea what we're knitting, uh, for our spring knit along for the month of April, we've chosen Dancing Dragonfly Mittens. It's a Canadian designer who lives in Alberta, Sarah L. Kelly. I'll post the link to the pattern in the comments below and maybe give you a close up here of the beautiful design. So these are two color stranded mittens knit in the traditional Latvian style. They feature the Latvian braid border at the bottom of the cuff and the top of the cuff. So there's a few new techniques to learn and if you have done stranding or feral work before then it's a great way to work on your tension and perfect some of, some of your color work skills. Um, what else can I say about it? It's fingering weight. So we 
featured either the Malabrigo soft weight, which is the Superwash Merino hand dye, as well as the Riverside Studio, which is fingering weight hand dyed in Quebec, and Quebec, Wakefield, Quebec. And the only difference with this one, it has the added fiber of cashmere added. So it's the Superwash Merino with some cashmere. Um, I'd say it's probably about 30% and then there is some nylon too for strength. So that's all you need just to choose the two colors, the contrast and the main. The needles that we're using, depending on your tension, not everybody can use what the suggested needle is, would be a 2.5 millimeter. I started with the Zing double point needle and I did the cuff section and then I switched over to my trusty um, 2.5 9 inch circular. So from here to the shaping, the beginning of the shaping, I've been using the 9 inch circular. So I like both the deep end and the circular and I don't really see any difference in my tension either way. So hi Diane, thanks for joining us, and Leslie, I'm sure your mittens are looking beautiful, and Andrea, and Suzanne, good afternoon. And where are you watching us from, Suzanne? And hi, Cindy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you the progress on my mittens. I hope you were able to catch last Friday's um, video. It, it's always available in the video section at the top of our Facebook page, even if you didn't watch it live. It was a really, really interesting question and answer with Sarah, the designer. I asked her five questions, she answered in the comments, and her answers are just beautifully um, written, very heartfelt. And then I also did show, which I'll show again today, one of the most special pairs of dragonfly mittens knit by our local knit alonger who completed them actually in the first week before before the rest of us had even cast on and she has made her own special interpretation so she's knit the pattern as the pattern was charted but she has chosen to add beads along the border to highlight the center of the floral motif she has two different beads and then as she got into the dragonflies she has knit in translucent beads that pick up the colors beautifully of the wings so all four wings both dragonflies she's knit in the beads and then afterwards she embellished the center of the dragonfly, so the body and the tail and the head, with a very, very fine silver metallic filament thread. So that's something to give you ideas. It may be too late to work in beads to your dragonfly wings, but you can accent or outline with the beads or metallic thread. It gives them a little bit extra weight and makes them very posh and artistic looking. Now at the very top of the mitten, you'll see that she's used her larger beads and she's embellished or knit in the very last flower at the very top in the motif. So it's amazing work. So that had all of us gobsmacked last week when we had a look at the beaded mittens even sarah the designer she was totally blown away by them hi tammy yeah it's really nice to see the different color combinations for the mittens because when you see them in a skein i mean you just have no idea how that's going to translate to the pattern and how the colors come out and play against each other. So that is what we've been up to for the month of April. Um, so we do have, I'm showing the prize. 
Uh, every week at the end of the live video, we'll do an incentive ballot draw. So that means one lucky winner will get an extra ballot in the ballot box for the grand prize. So stick around to the end of the video and find out what the trivia question is. And if you post the right answer in the comments and happen to be the randomly picked winner, you'll get a, an extra ballot in there. Um, yeah, so last week I was talking about an alternate method for the thumb. It's called the afterthought thumb, which is very similar if you're soft knitter to the afterthought heel. So the method that is explained in the pattern is a very good method. Um, it has you placing the first section of the thumb opening onto a stitch holder or waist yarn. So the stitches are going to be held until you finish the mitt and then you pick up around the thumb opening. And then it has you casting on the same number of stitches over the thumb opening so that you can continue up and complete your mitt. So that is the, the method that's written in the pattern. But uh, as I said last week, if you wanted to try the afterthought thumb, I mean, it's not any more difficult than the regular method for the thumb. I have posted the tutorial step-by-step -step in the event page under discussion. And I will show you where I'm at. I haven't completed my thumb, but I want to demonstrate what you can do there. Thanks, Colleen. The dragonfly mitts are so much fun to knit, and we all seem to have a connection to dragonflies in our own special way. Okay, so here is my first mitten. So I'm using the Malabrigo socks in the black, and this is Indecida. Indecida is that beautiful greeny blue mix of colors. It's a very squishy yarn and very bouncy. Absolutely a dream to knit with. So there you can see how it translates into my dragonflies. It gives them a little bit of a um, light undertone and then that pretty periwinkle, which I love. So that's my color choice. Um, we've also added the cuff detail. So this was in week one, if you go back to the first video. This is just something to give it a bit of a liner, which will fold up inside and keep the drafts out when you're wearing them. Or you can tuck it into a jacket cuff. So the explanation for how to add that into your pattern is also featured in the event discussion thread. We've also posted the video tutorial for how to do the two color cast on if you choose to do the cuff without the liner according to the pattern and also how to do the lacking and braid. It gives it a really nice three-dimensional effect and embellishment. So I have now chosen to do the afterthought thumb. So to do the afterthought thumb, the first step is to take some scrap yarn in a high contrast color, the same thickness, fingering weight. So I chose a bright, bright green, and then I could easily see it. And all I did was knit across the appropriate number of stitches according to the chart for the thumb opening. I then flipped that number of stitches in my bright, bright green back over to my left needle. So slip one stitch at a time, don't get too carried away or too confident. And then I just continued to knit across the bright green yarn with my two colors in the pattern. So that left a little stripe in the knitting. And then I finished to the top of where I am now, the top of the decreases. So then what I did, I took one of my DPN needles, and I started to pick up all the stitches under the green stripe. And then I flipped it over, and I also picked up all the stitches across the top of the green stripe. With the third needle, 
I started to unpick slowly the scrap yarn in the bright green. So this is how I ended up with a hole in my mitten, which is on purpose. So all my stitches are very secure on the top needle and the bottom needle. I've just pushed it through here to hold them in place. So when I'm ready to start my thumb, which will be this weekend, I'm going to follow the directions in the pattern exactly. I'm going to knit in the pattern across the stitches on the needle, and then I'm going to pick up two stitches to round the corner, and that will stop any holes from forming. And then I'm going to knit across the stitches on the top needle and pick up two stitches in the opposite corner. So what I wanted to show you is how to, how to pick up the stitches in the corner or what to pick up in the corner. So you're going to have a little bar sitting right at the edge of the opening. This is on the side of the opening. So when you pick it up to put it on your double point needle, take a good look at it and if it's going to leave a hole or a gap below it, then you can do one of two things. You can pick up a secondary bar behind it and that will reinforce it and make it stronger. Because you have to remember the thumb is going to have a lot of pull in the corner as it's being worn. Or what you can do is pick up the outside bar and then knit into the back of it. So that will twist the stitch and make it stronger. So you're just looking for the two bars. So I would say probably this one here and then the black one above it and then knit across and then you'll do the same thing on this side. You're just going to look for the two bars that you can pick up without. See this one is leaving a great big stretched hole. So I have the choice of either knitting into the back of it or digging down a little deeper and getting under two bars. So the top one, now that we're focused, is too loose for my liking. So I would dig down a little deeper. You don't want to pick up more than two bars. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. We want to get a nice thumb that's seamless, and you can also leave a little bit extra tail length when you're starting your thumb, because that will allow you to close in any gaps afterwards, like invisible mending. We do that too on sock heels. Um, sometimes, when we're doing a top-down sweater and transitioning to the sleeves, there is a bit of pull at the underarm corners. So it's nice to have that option of tightening it up after with the yarn that's already attached to your tail end. And um, so that is the thumb. I'm gonna post a little bit more information on the discussion page about the corner stitches. And then I have followed now the pattern to the very top of the decrease section and I'm going to offer an alternate for the top shaping. So there is the traditional picket fence top mitten which is very European and it looks just like a picket fence. It comes to a point and that is pretty much the um, design of all Latvian mittens. And this is also the design on our mitten project. But you have the choice, if you're not comfortable with a sharp point at the top of your fingertips, if you feel that your fingers would not sit comfortably inside the top, you have the choice of doing the rounded top, which is a little bit more the North American and the British style of mitten. So I'll bring over the rounded top and show you the difference. So I'm at the point now 
where I cannot knit any farther in the pattern. The instructions are telling me to cut my yarn, thread it through the remaining number of stitches, tighten and secure. That's going to create the same idea as if you would do it at the top of a hat. It will draw it in very, very close together. And keep the style of the picket fence fingertip. But if I stay at the number of stitches I have now and eliminate the finishing method in the pattern, I have two choices. I can graph the stitches together now and that would make it a little bit more rounded and flat at the tip. So I still have the picket fence going up the side, but it'd be nice and flat just for about an inch across the top. So that would look like this style of mitten, where it's a very sharp decrease and all of a sudden it's flat across the top because the stitches have been grafted. Or my other choice is to do one more decrease round in my main color, which is not on the chart. So that would reduce my number of stitches by four stitches. So that's going to draw it in. So it'll look like this at the end of your final decrease round. So that's adding in one more decrease round. And then it will look a little bit more like this. So it is picket fence and then just a very shallow rounded top. So at that point, after I do one more decrease round, then I would be ready to graph the remaining stitches together. I haven't decided yet which method I'll do, but I thought I would pose the, um, the alternate methods to you and then you, you can make up your own choice. It doesn't um, disturb anything in the pattern. It doesn't disturb the color work because the color work is already finished at this point. It would strictly be grafting with the main color. For me, that's the black. And I've already cut the contrast color, so it's safely tucked underneath for me to sew in after. I think it's really a personal preference. It's just how it feels on your fingertip. And if you're the sort of person who's very sensitive and you don't want to feel your fingers are forced into a sharp slanted point, then give it a little bit of ease at the top so you can spread out your fingers and wave to people on the street. Okay, Andrea has a question. If we do the rounded together decrease, will it affect the pattern? No, it won't. It will just add, add another round of the main color and in such a tiny tension on such tiny needles that doesn't really have much um, bearing on the pattern. It might even show up the last little flower which I absolutely love. There's one tiny little flower at the very tip of the fingertips. You see that one there? The four stitch diamond shaped Okay. Yeah, so by adding another black round with the extra four stitches decrease, I think would even accentuate this little flower. Plus it will match up nicely to the thick black line here where we did the decreasing on either side. So not to worry, whichever method you choose is going to be completely fine. And then the last little tip I want to show you, as promised two weeks ago, if you chose to do the liner, uh, I know many of you did, and then you started directly into your Latvian braid on the cuff, you would have your contrast color end, hopefully not sewn in yet, to finish off. And you can see that that leaves a bit of an uneven it 
leaves an uneven line there. See how it looks like it's a little bit lower on the left and it's not completely matching up with the right. That's just part of knitting in the round. So all you do to finalize it is pull it back to the right and then go in so that you're keeping that same slanted bar formation. There, just gives you a nice straight line at the bottom. In case you're wearing your liner out as a, a cuff. So I think those are all the tips that I can show you. And then we get to the fun part, which is knitting mitten number two. I had a couple of people mentioning this week how much they enjoyed knitting their mittens and I thought you know that's really great because when you enjoy knitting something so much it's not very often you get to knit the same thing again unless you're doing socks or mittens so if you enjoy the first mitten so much you're going to enjoy the second mitten even more and I don't think there is any such thing as second mitten syndrome like there is second sock syndrome this pattern has just been so interesting and magical and, you know, in some, some parts a little bit challenging to keep the tension and following the chart late at night, like I found out. So I'm looking forward to knitting my second mitten and I'll be casting it on this weekend. Okay, so let's get to our Did You Know trivia. So about dragonflies, did you know that having a dragonfly land on your head is considered good luck? In some countries, yes it is. I've had one land on my shoulder or my arm, but never on my head. Dragonflies don't consume caffeine, but do need to warm up in the sun each morning before taking flight. Something about the heat from the sun just gets their, their motor going. And did you know that one dragonfly can consume up to hundreds of mosquitoes each day? So we need more and more dragonflies in Muskoka because we always have far too many mosquitoes in our summer. So now for the incentive ballot randomly picked um, answer. Feel free to post your guess in the comments and we'll pick a random winner after the video airs to the question. So the question is, similar to bird watching, what is the name given to the activity of watching dragonflies? So if you're going out with a group of people or by yourself, you know, with binoculars and you're doing some bird watching, there is a name for that when it comes to dragonflies. So we'll wait to see who posts the right answer in the comments. And this week we also have a special, um, a special draw. So we'll have another randomly picked winner. And this is from Sarah, the designer. She's very generously offered her dancing dragonfly beanie pattern, which has been out on Ravelry since last Saturday. And it is the same pattern of the dancing dragonflies, yet it's knit up in a DK weight yarn. Just a nice cozy beanie. You can add a pom-pom or leave it off. So she is going to email one copy of her pattern to a lucky winner and to enter to win that, all you have to do is post in the comments just something to Sarah. You can say, you know, you enjoyed knitting the pattern. Hi Sarah. Anything you like. So we'll pick a winner that way too. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, tomorrow is LYS Day. I'm sure you all know what that is. It happens once a year in April. And I think now for two, two Aprils, we haven't really been able to celebrate in person LYS, Local Yarn Shop Day. So that happens all around North America on the same day. And it's just a 
a day to celebrate your local yarn shop and usually we have some fun activities but we won't be able to do it this year. We will be doing a giveaway on Instagram. If you follow Mistletoe Yarn Connection on Instagram, you can participate in that tomorrow. A fun little giveaway. And I will be here tomorrow at 10 o'clock if you feel like joining me for a live store tour. I know a lot of you have not been in the store before and you're, you're probably wondering what's beyond the screen over here and what's beyond the camera screen over here. So I will give you a nice kind of slow to medium speed tour through the store and show you the different yarns and some of the things that we've knit with, with the yarns or what you could knit with the yarns and how the store is laid out. And then I will even open the back door and show you what's out in the backyard, which is really the interior of the building. So that should be fun. Okay, we've got some answers coming in now. Hmm. Dragon flying is a good guess, but no, that's not it. It's a single word, and it has no relationship to any part of the word dragonfly. Okay, we're getting some, some correct answers, so I'll let you post. It's not the first correct answer that we're picking, it's just a randomly um, picked comment. So that will give that uh, winner an incentive ballot in the draw bucket towards the grand prize. And then remember to post a comment mentioning Sarah, the designer, and we'll pick the winner of the Dancing Dragonfly beanie pattern later today. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you're enjoying your day and getting some knitting done. It is now starting to rain in Muskoka, so I'm sure there's going to be a rainbow when I go home. I will see you next week, same time, 3 p.m.